Now, Governor Blanco, you were the first female governor in the history of Louisiana, and you also were a Democrat in a state that has become increasingly more and more conservative. Do you think that this complicated your relationship with the Bush White House? Well, it, it complicated the White House piece of it because President Bush had a political person in his office, in the person of Karl Rove. Uh, most presidents and most governors do not put their political people in their office as employees. They, you know, those people remain independent advisors, but not as employees. So it was, um, it, it had a political uh, uh, tint to everything that came out of the Bush White House. And I think that the unfortunate thing is that President Bush was a very compassionate man, and he was making decisions from his heart as well as his head. But then when the national media started jumping on him and um, for the delays, and he couldn't, he couldn't get FEMA to uh, produce the desired results in a timely fashion, uh, I would say specifically the buses, uh, and, and I asked the White House every day if they could possibly get the buses here, and every one of them wanted to do that. But, you know, it, it seemed like they could not move the bureaucracy in time. It, it took until Thursday morning. The storm hit on Monday, and FEMA buses finally arrived on Thursday morning. But, um, y you know, the, I didn't sense the politics of it initially, because I, uh, I was dealing with the president directly. And I considered him a very decent, compassionate man. The politics began to unfold in the wake of, uh, of the attacks that the president was taking. And of course, what is the best way to turn attention from one being attacked? And that's to find another scapegoat. So I became the, the logical scapegoat. And, uh, you know, they went so far as to put uh, a very definitive lie out. Carl Rove told Time Magazine, who told me that the information came from him, he told Time Magazine and the Washington Post that the reason for the federal delay was that the governor of Louisiana had not signed the disaster declaration till after landfall. Well, we all know it was a lie because every media outlet in Louisiana announced it on Friday night and printed it on Saturday morning. And, you know, it, it just was the lie, the big lie that was used to discredit me. And the lie lived on for several weeks. And, you know, I told my people, including Bob Mann, that they needed to quit trying to fight these public relations wars, that the attacks were going to come on me and let them. I said, we are not going to use our energy to fight a public relations initiative. We're going, to, we're going to save lives. That is our mission. Our mission is to get Louisiana whole, to keep it together, to, to, to prevent as many people from dying as we possibly can do. And while they're sitting in air-conditioned offices planning these political strategies that are designed to hurt someone or another, and they were trying to blame Louisiana for everything that went wrong in the storm when we were the absolute victims. And I always found that to be a great irony. And I deeply resented the, the, the politicization of this disaster because you're, you're putting too many lives at risk when you, do, when you want to play political games. I was never really a partisan person. Um, so I guess that made me a little bit naive toward the level of politics that they were willing to play. And uh, I mean, I intellectually understood politics was going to, to come into play. I just didn't think it would be as, um, as coarse uh, and as uh, dishonest as it actually turned out to be.